Welcome to the Transformation Church Podcast, where we're leading people into a transforming relationship with Jesus. We hope this message inspires you, builds your faith, and gives you a fresh perspective on God and His Word so you can see transformation in your own life. Enjoy the message. I shared last week that uh, this series um, that we're going to be talking about, The Woman at the Well, that it was planned to start this Sunday. Uh, but really just sense that the Lord was wanting to, to push that back a week um, so that we could talk about uncertainty, so that we could have a week to, to kind of unpack uh, this feeling of uncertainty that, that a lot of us are, are feeling um, in this season, have been feeling for the last couple years. Um, one thing that, that, that we know about certainty is that I'm certain uncertainty will happen in our lives, right? And so we need some, we need some biblical principles. We need to, to kind of have an idea of what we can kind of grab a hold of to get us through those times. And so that's what I want to, want to talk to you about uh, today. Well, before we jump into, um, into God's word, let's, uh, let's say our prayer together today. Say this out loud with me. Father, as I open your word today, speak to me. May I have ears to hear, a heart to receive, and the courage to respond. In Jesus' name, amen. Uh, let me ask you this question. Like if somebody, um, if somebody would have come to you uh, two years ago this week and said that in a few days, the president of the United States is going to uh, issue a state of emergency that the whole world is going to, to shut down, like countries are going to close their borders, that you will have to start wearing a mask everywhere that you go, that you will stand in line at the grocery store just to buy toilet paper, that you'll lose loved ones, that inflation will be the highest that it's ever been in 40 years, that gas prices are gonna double, that racial tension is gonna be the worst that it's been in some 75 years, that our country will be the most divided it's been since the Civil War that the Soviet Union is going to invade Ukraine and kill innocent people, that news channels are gonna be talking about and rumors are gonna be spreading about World War III and nuclear bombs. Um, Would you have believed them? I mean, of course, you would have not believed them. Like, like you and I would have looked at that person and thought that they were crazy. Like, what sci-fi movie did they just get done watching? And yet, and yet here we are. And yet here we are. That's the, word, the world that we live in. You know, I was, I was looked up um, the word uncertainty uh, this week in, um, in the dictionary. And here's what, what that word um, was defined as, the quality or state of being uncertain. <laughs> Super helpful. Thank you. Thank you, Webster. Thank you. Um, <laughs> yeah, it didn't help me either. Um, but this feeling of uncertainty that we experience in our life, um, it's kind of that space between um, what we've lost, and maybe you've lost um, over these last couple years, maybe you've lost like your job, maybe you've lost the predictability in your schedule, maybe you've lost um, margin in your finances, you've lost your health, you've even lost a, a loved one. But what brings about uncertainty is that not only have you lost these things, but you still don't know what will be. Do we have that graphic? That uncertainty is when you lost what was and you don't know what will be. Like you don't know what this world is gonna look like 
a few months from now, like you don't know what the economy is going to be like, like you don't know what you're going to do about getting to work if gas prices continue to rise, like, like when are things going to get back to, to normal? And, and to be honest, that space that we find ourselves in between what we've lost and what we don't know, that it becomes at times too much to process. And when it comes too much to process, we experience what's called a crisis of belief. This word crisis comes from the Greek word that means decision. And what it is, is it's a, it's a turning point in our life. It's a, it's a fork in the road where we must decide what we will choose to believe about God. And the truth is, is that you and I are going to have these moments of uncertainty throughout our life. And believe it or not, our response during them greatly impacts how much of God we experience in our lives. And the reason why is because God places the greatest things in life on the other side of our greatest fears. You see, there's there's some good news though this morning. The good news is this, is that maybe we've lost what was and maybe we don't know what will be. But if we're going to know what to do when we don't know what to do, then we have to understand this as Christ followers, that we do have who is. That even though we've lost what was, and even though we don't know what will be, that we, we have who is. And I want to unpack that statement a little bit today, and I want to share three three really powerful truths that I think will help give us perspective in the midst of uncertainty in our life. But before we jump into those, I want you to see something in 1 Chronicles chapter 12. Now, now 1 Chronicles to me is a, is a fascinating book because not only does it chronicle uh, the history of the Jewish people, but it's got some like legit warrior stuff in this, in this book. Like if you guys, if you like the movie 300, like you'll love some of the stories in 1 Chronicles. But in 1 Chronicles 12, we read about these tribes that, that come to join King David's army. And, and I want you to notice something that set the tribe of Issachar apart from everyone else. In 1 Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32, this is what we see. That from the tribe of Issachar, there were 200 leaders of the tribe with their relatives That all these men, now look at these two qualifications or characteristics that they had. These men, they understood the signs of the times and they knew the best course for Israel to take. That they understood the times and they knew what to do. And friend, that is God's desire for each and every one of us in these last days. And these are the last days. And the only way that we can understand the uncertainty, to understand the times and to know what to do is if we settle these three truths in our heart. The first one is this, that God is in charge. That at the end of the day, God is in charge. Now, you would think that this would be a natural response for Christ followers, but, but you'd be surprised. Like, you'd be surprised. Like, I mean, as Christians, we are great at saying yes to Jesus for salvation, and then spending the rest of our lives telling God what to do, right? Right? Like, we're pretty good at that. Proverbs 19.21 says that that you can make many plans and, and we should make plans. But he says, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Like, at the end of the day, we should make plans about our future, about our families, about our finances. But at the end of the day, we should surrender those plans to the Lord because at the end of the day, his will will prevail. 
And for us to accept that, that God is in charge, it forces us to embrace the fact that you and I aren't. Like if we're going to be like, okay, God, you are in charge, then it forces us to embrace the fact that we aren't. You see, the Bible describes one of God's characteristics as being sovereign. Sovereign, which means the absolute right to do all things according to his own good pleasure. In other words, there are no limits to God's rule. Like he is sovereign over the whole world and everything that happens in it. That he's never helpless, he's never frustrated, never at a loss of what to do. Like God has never once panicked about what is happening on earth, right? And check this out, nothing has ever just occurred to God. Have you ever considered that? Like, like you and I can go along our day and, and like it just occurred to us that this is why this person treated us that way or this is why this situation happened in our life. Like God has never had one of those moments where he's just kind of hanging out in heaven and something just occurred to him of discovery of why something has happened. And, and friend, that's why. We've got to understand that there may be chaos on earth, but there's never been confusion of what to do in heaven. We may experience uncertainty. We may experience chaos in our lives, in our occupation, in our families, but there's never been confusion of what to do in heaven. And that's why you and I, we have to, if we're going to, to, to get through uncertainty in the kind of way that God would have us do, then we've got to settle this in our heart that some things will happen in our lives outside of our control, but nothing will happen in our lives outside of God's control. It might feel like everything is spinning out of control. We don't know what decisions to make, but nothing is outside of God's control. You see, Jesus promised that we'd have trouble in our lives, that it is, listen, it is a byproduct of you and I living in a fallen and sinful world, that we're going to have trouble, that we're going to face difficulty in our lives. But he gives us this powerful promise in Isaiah 26, 3, that he will keep in perfect peace all who trust in him and all whose thoughts are fixed on him. In other words, when we're in the midst of uncertainty in our life, that if we can put our trust in the fact that God is in charge and put our trust in the fact and, and, and fix our eyes on him, meaning we don't get distracted from all these things that are around us, but our focus is on God, that when we do that, he keeps us in perfect peace. It doesn't say that he removes all the uncertainty. It doesn't say he removes all the problems, but he says that there will be a deep inner peace in our hearts in the midst of it. And the reason why we should put our trust in the fact that God is in control is because scripture shows us that evil in our lives has an expiration date, that the beast is on a leash, that the world is not what it appears to be, that the church is the most protected people on the entire planet, and in the end, God wins. In the end, God wins. For in the joy and the confidence that we have as believers is knowing that we might not know what happens next, but friend, we know what happens last. Like God wins. The second truth that, that we've got to settle in our hearts to make it through times of uncertainty is that God does not change. So not only is he in control, but God does not change. 
You know, the unfortunate thing about the world we live in is that everything around us changes. And I can prove it to you. Um, I don't know if you're familiar with this kind of feature on Facebook called Time Hop, right? What Time Hop does is like when you posted a picture, um, and I think about it more so in the context of being a parent, like I post a picture of my kids 10 years ago at some event, something that they did, and then all of a sudden the 10 year anniversary of that post pops up one morning on my Facebook um, feed and it's a reminder of how small those kids are and how large they are now, like how much they have changed through the years. And so I, I thought it would be quite interesting for us to take a moment and to look at how much change has happened in, um, in some of our staff's lives, right? So, so check this out from a time hop perspective. Um, see if you can identify who this, who this man is. Yes, <laughs> Mr. Mike Braddock. He's changed a little bit since then. All right, next one. Look at Christina. She is rocking the gloves. <laughs> rocking the gloves. All right, there's Miss Gloria. Gloria said... She said that was in my hood days. <laughs> Pastor Donnie. Woo! Styling and profiling. And then Andrea and I, that's like hundreds of pounds ago. Um, uh, but even then I was wearing a Florida State shirt. So there you go. There you go. Such class in that picture. <laughs> uh, but we all change. We all change in our lives. Everything around us changes. It doesn't stay the same, but God never changes. Like he doesn't. In Malachi 3, 6, it, he says, I am the Lord and I do not change. In Hebrews 13, 8, it says that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Listen, just because uncertainty is all around us doesn't mean that, that God has, has lost his power, that he is in charge and he doesn't change. And the reason why this is important for us to resolve in our heart is because if God doesn't change, then here's what that means. It means that God can be trusted. That if he doesn't change, if he's the same yesterday, today, and forever, then that means that he can be trusted. Like, have you ever had a friend or somebody that you've, you've like tried to get close to and, um, and their emotions have fluctuated like the stock market, right? Like one day they're up and one day they're down, up and down, up and down. Those, it's hard to get connected. It's hard to build relationships when, when, when people have those, those ups and downs like that, right? But in this situation, there's something to be said about the consistency, the fact that God never changes. Like, uh, I love what the great theologian said, he, a theologian from the 1990s. Um, his name was Forrest Gump. I don't know if you've heard of him in, in, the, in his great works, but uh, here's what he said about uncertainty. He said, life is like a box of chocolates, right? You never know. You never know what you're going to get. <laughs> Here's what I've heard said before. That we may not know what the future holds, but we do know who holds the future. The third, the third thing that I want to share, the third truth as the worship team begins to prepare. The third truth is this, and you can't miss this one, that God is changing me. So not only is God in control and no longer uh, um, the fact that God never changes, but also in the midst of uncertainty in our life, we have to know that God is changing me. Listen, God is more concerned with changing you than he is changing your circumstances. Like our prayers typically gravitate to 
like God, like, like fix this problem, fix this problem, fix this problem, like intervene in this situation, intervene in this situation. And, and sometimes he does, but, but if we'll step back away from just trying to get God to fix all of our uncertainty and all of our problems so that we can kind of get back to telling him what to do, right? And kind of live in our, our kind of comfortable life. Like if we would take a step back from that and recognize that in the midst of our problems and uncertainty, that God is more interested in the prayers of, oh, Father, there's a lot going on in my family. There's a lot going on in my finances. There's a lot going on with, with my job. And Lord, I want you to fix it. I want you to take that away. But even if you don't take it away, like God, show me the areas of my life. Show me the places in my life. Show me the emotions. Show me the way that I think that is not like you. And give me the strength and the courage to be able to make changes so that God, I can be the man or the woman that you've called me to be. Like that's the kind of prayer that begins to shift the atmosphere in our life spiritually because no longer is it about us getting what we want and trying to get back to kind of normal, comfortable, but it's about us aligning our lives with the will of God for our lives and recognizing that God, there's this transformation process that God is wanting to take all of us along, that along the way in every stage, we're cutting away the things in our life that are not like him and becoming more and more like him. And friend, I don't know about you, but I've never found that um, happen in my lives when everything is great. It's seasons of uncertainty. It's seasons with problems surround us that cause us to get a little unsettled and restless, that cause us to kind of step out of the space that we've been living in for a long time and beginning to lean in more to God. I think of this guy named Victor Frankel. And Victor was was one of the Jews that was sentenced to a Nazi concentration camp. And he says that while he was in the camp, that the guards, that the guards stripped him of everything, stripped him of his identity, took his wife away, took his family away, took his clothes away, even took his uh, wedding ring away. And here's what he said about that experience. He said, there's one thing that they could not take away from me. He said, the last of human freedoms is the ability to choose one's attitude in a given set of circumstances. In other words, what he said, like you can take all these other things away from me, things that I care greatly about, but I refuse to allow them to take the freedom of me choosing what my attitude is gonna be in the midst of it. And the truth is, is we can't control whether we experience times of uncertainty. Uncertainty is a given in our lives, but we can control how we respond in the midst of it. We can control whether uncertainty makes us a bitter person or it makes us a better person. You see, what matters in life is not so much what happens to us, but but what happens in us. It's less about what's around us and it's more about what's inside of us. And in Romans 8, 29, it says, for from the very beginning, God decided that those who came to him and all along he knew who would, that those people should become like his son. Like there is a, there is an expectation that God has on you and I when we raise our hand, when we accept salvation, accept what Jesus did on the cross to forgive us of our sins. The expectation is not that we walk out these doors and we go back living our life the way that we were living them before we came in. The expectation is that we lean into this transformation process of becoming more and more like him. In 1 John 2, 6, 
It says that those who say that they live in God should live their lives as Jesus did. Like there should be a a vision for our lives that's not built around whether the problems get resolved and the tension of the uncertainty in our life goes away, that the vision of our lives is to recognize that Jesus experienced difficulty, but yet he still fulfilled the Father's purpose. And that you and I, the promise is that we're gonna experience difficulty in our lives but are we going to fulfill the Father's purpose in ours? Like, are we gonna take our our attention? Are we gonna take our, our mental capacity, the time and the energy that we put into all the uncertainty in our lives and shift it and focus to God? What are you wanting to change in me? What is it about my life that that is out of order? What is it about the way that I live my life and the things that I think and the things that I say that are not like you? Friend, we've got to understand about life and uncertainty that God will use the uncertainty around us to produce the godly change inside of us. Romans 5, verse 3 says that we can rejoice too when we run into problems and trials. For we know that they help us develop endurance. And endurance develops strength of character. And character strengthens our confident hope of salvation. This word character in the original language means to be tested or proven reliable. Like God is wanting to develop this character inside of us that we are, are tested, that we are proven reliable. Like it makes me think of, of the blacksmith who takes a piece of steel with the desire to make a sword and he heats that piece of steel up and then he takes a, a hammer and he lays the steel across an anvil and he just begins to hammer and to shape the piece of steel to, in, uh, in order to become the sword that is a part of his vision. And our lives are much like that, that the problems we face and the uncertainty that we experience, that God is the, the divine blacksmith and he's taken our lives and he's, he's, he's hammering here and he's, he's shaping here in order for us to become all that he's created us to be. And that's why Paul says in verse five that this hope, that it won't lead to disappointment. For we know how dearly God loves us. Friend, if you're anything like me, you're going through some uncertainty right now. I want you to consider these three questions this week. That do I have a track record of telling God what what he needs to do? Do I tend to put my hope in a solution that is ever changing or do I put my hope in the God that never changes? And what might God be trying to change in me during my uncertainty? Church, it's three really introspective questions that will reveal a lot about our relationship with God in the midst of uncertainty. It makes me think of of a song, a song by the name of Great Is Thy Faithfulness. I don't know if you notice, but there's a lot of biblical truth in some of those older hymns. And a lot of these older hymns are songs that were written out of a season of uncertainty. And the same is true for this song written by a guy named Thomas Chisholm. 
It actually began as a poem that was written. You see, Thomas had gotten saved in 1893 when he was 26 years old. And 10 years later, he was ordained as a minister. But he had to step down due to poor health. That despite all the uncertainty that surrounded him in his life related to his health, he penned these powerful words, thou changest not. Thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, O Father, thou forever will be. What was he declaring during the uncertainty of his health? He was declaring this that God is in control, that God doesn't change that he's changing me so that he can be reliable. You're saying, God, I might not understand why everything is happening the way it is around me, but I thank God I don't have to. And the reason why is because, Father, great is thy faithfulness. Thanks for listening. If you enjoyed today's message, be sure to share it with your friends and tag us at TransformTLH. Thanks again for listening, and we look forward to seeing your face in the place someday. Have a great week.